Wisdom is a spiritual virtue. And every virtue is meant to deliver substance. So also, the wisdom of God has tangible evidences when it is at work. There is wisdom definition and there is wisdom manifestation. There are those who define it, there are those others who manifest it. Now you see, in every subject, there are experts in definition and there are experts in products. Am I saying something? There are professors who can analyze business and there are crude market people who can really do business. There are people who teach prosperity. There are those who practice and demonstrate prosperity. The teaching may not be as fine, but the product cannot be denied. What people will listen to you for is your result, not your grammar. Your result, not your grammar. When a man with result is speaking, everybody is writing notes. When a man without result is speaking, they say, Oga, uh, show us your product. In marketing, it is product you sell, not grammar. Am I saying something? It is product you sell. Proofs that cannot be doubted. And I'm speaking to you this morning by the grace of God as one with proofs. I have products. What are our products? First of all, our life. Secondly, the testimonies of others for whom it has worked. A sick person can convince you that you can live in health. Physician, heal thyself. Am I saying something? So we are looking at the subject of wisdom that works. Wisdom that works. And Proverbs is a key book of wisdom in the Bible, even though the entire Bible is the book of wisdom. But Proverbs in particular focuses on the subject of wisdom. Proverbs is pictorial knowledge. Knowledge in pictures is what Proverbs is all about. Knowledge that you can picture for easy application to guarantee undeniable result. And by the way, I'd like to recommend for you, please do the reading of Proverbs this month. And I'd like you to complete it. It's only 31 chapters. Now, this great man of God called Billy Graham, who is acclaimed to be number one man in America today by assessment of you know some great people. He said he read three chapters of the Psalms every day for inspiration and one chapter of Proverbs for wisdom on how to relate with people. And it shows in his life it's about the cleanest America in terms of integrity. The Senate in America honored him with a gold, a gold medal. His name is printed in the, on the floor of the house. It's done for people in America, done for Americans with such distinguished honor at rare times and seasons. Truly, all wise people have a place at the top. Show me a wise man, then I will predict a man that is gunning for the top. You cannot get to the top without wisdom. Foolishness is synonymous to the floor. Wisdom is synonymous for the top. If you must get there, take the ladder of wisdom. Now, what practical way can we look at wisdom this morning? Promotion does not come from the south or from the east or from the west. It comes from God. And the ladder you use to climb up for promotion is diligence. Seest thou a man diligent in his business, then you have found a man who will stand before kings and not before men. men. It is the works of your hands that opens to you doors that no man can open. In Revelation chapter 3 verse 8, he said, I know your works. Therefore, a door is open to you which no man can shut. I know your works. This work will open to you doors that no man can shut. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And I said something very outstanding. I said people may not like you, but they need you. 
They will promote you because they need you, not because they like you. I don't ask people to like me. When I walk, you can't deny the walk. And as a result of the walk, you give me a seat. Shout hallelujah. Some years back, we went for an, for an occasion. And um, they took me up to sit somewhere among the VIPs. And one man followed me. One pastor. He just saw me that they were taking me there. So he also came there. So he sat down. So they came to him and said, it's not your level. What gave me seat? My work. I don't struggle to be recognized when I go for an occasion. But when they spot me, they say, ah, no, 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 no. This kind of guy place you sit down. You move forward. When I travel, I'm compelled to be traveling in the first class or business class, among other reasons. Because when people see me, they don't let me rest. Some fellows in first class, when they see me, they say, no, no, no. That's not your class. Come and take my seat. I said, no, but you paid for a seat down there. They said, no. I'm not flying again. Come and sit down here. That's where you belong. So from there, I was compelled to be traveling first class, business class, where there is no first class. Walks speaking, walks speaking, walks speaking. Your walk, nobody can deny. It keeps speaking all the time. So if you want to be promoted, be diligent. Be diligent. Before you pray, improve your work. Prayer is not a substitute to work. You can pray and be paralyzed. Now, we want to look at something else now on wisdom application for progress. Wisdom application for progress. How do I make continuous progress in my endeavor, in my career, in my business? in my family, in my finances. In the same book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 18, a picture is painted about the covenant provision for the believer's progress. Verse 18, The path of the just is as a shining light which shineth more and more until the perfect day. More was used only twice. It will have been more than that for space. So it could be shine at more and more and more and more until the perfect day. Tell your neighbor you will shine more and more. I didn't hear you. Okay, tell yourself. Now I know you'll do it better now. When it is you, I know it will be better, which is all right, because you love your neighbor as yourself, not more than yourself. Shout hallelujah. What is it that makes you to shine? In Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 1, is the wisdom make the face of a man to shine. So it is wisdom that makes you to shine more and more. Now, the scriptures describes the pathway of a righteous man that is designed to be for progress. Will you say with me again, I am meant for progress. Progress means to have advancement, to have continuous forward movement. But I'd like you to know that progress begins with appraisal. It begins with appraisal. How much progress you make in life is determined by how much appraisal you make of yourself. And the best appraisal of life is self-appraisal. Self-appraisal. You see, when you are sick physiologically, you go to a doctor to check you up. But when you have a problem, it is you and only you that can examine yourself better. I want you to listen to this again. Because often, we keep looking for who to help us. If you are sick, medically speaking, you go to a doctor for a checkup. And then after a series of tests and analysis, they tell you this is the problem and they start treating you. But when you have a problem of life no doctor can help you no counselor can help you you have to appraise yourself you have to examine yourself 
to find a way forward. And this is why in Proverbs chapter 4, see what the word of God says. Verse 26. Ponder the way of your feet. Ponder. Say with me, ponder. And let all thy ways as a result of your pondering be established. Ponder. The word ponder means to think over and deeply. Look practically into the issues of your life. Ask practical questions. Why are things not working for me? Or why are things working the way they are? Before an archer will shoot his arrow, he first of all pulls the arrow to himself before he will shoot it forward. And how closely he is able to pull it to himself determines how far the arrow will be shot. Am I saying something? Now somebody said, I have not tried that before, but I think many of us here, if not all, will have tried catapult before. If you want the stone to go far, what do you do? You pull the catapult to its elastic limit. And as you pull it strong, then you are getting it ready to go far. So, how well you look inward to yourself determines how far you will make progress. Self appraiser. Self appraiser looking within to extend outside ponder in second corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 he said examine yourself examine yourself you know the number one culprit in any challenge you have is you you are number one culprit of your life you are number one person to be held responsible for anything in your life before you blame someone, look inward. Every time you point a finger this way, look at my hand. Three fingers are pointed in my direction. So when you say, it's you that is on my way, three is in your direction. That is to say, if we should find the ratio of who is responsible for the challenge you are facing, 25% to outsiders, 75% to yourself. Ratio 1 to 3. Every time you say you are the one, you are pointing three times. I'm three times the one. You are one once the one. I'm three times the one. Do you know the reason why many people have remained in their problem? They keep looking for who to blame. And you remain lame for as long as you find who to blame. You blame them, you lame yourself. This is why it is very crucial. Examine yourself. Examine yourself. When church is not growing, I hold myself responsible. Why is church not growing? A pastor will say that his church is not growing because there are several big churches around where his church is. They go to those big churches. They say, why is your church not growing? You see, we don't have musical instruments. In that church, when they start doing praise, everybody likes to go there. In Haggai chapter 1, there was a national crisis. And they were looking for who to blame. And in verses 6 and 7, a prophet came and said, Hey, consider your ways. Consider your ways. Consider your ways. Business is not moving forward. Consider your ways. What could be the reason? Maybe I have eaten capital with overhead. Consider your ways. Maybe I am sleeping too much. Maybe my priority is not well set. Consider your ways. If you will think well, you will discover more. Thinking is a process of exploration. And exploration is what leads to discoveries. And it is discoveries that brings about improvement. And improvement is what we call progress. Consider your ways. Business is not moving and you are thinking of buying a new car. Consider. Market is not going well and you are thinking of going for holiday, spending the remaining money remaining. Consider your ways. Because your friend is traveling at summer 
and how will they feel if you don't travel as well? What you don't want them to know today, they will know tomorrow. They will know tomorrow. Say, you see, I don't want my friends to think that things are not working for me. Ah, They will know tomorrow. When the wind blows, in the West, they used to say, when the wind blows, the, the fowls uh, will, be, will be open. <laughs> what is being covered by the fowl will become open to all. Consider your ways. Consider your ways. Before you look for who to blame, look inward. For as long as you find who to blame, you remain lame. In Proverbs 27, verse 23 and verse 24, he said, Be thou diligent to know the state of your flock, and look well to your hearts. Know the state of your flock. Properly appraise yourself. Don't put yourself under any pressure. There are people who buy a kind of vehicle because their friends bought the time. So I want to I want to also be in the class. You don't struggle to be in a class, you grow to be in a class. Examine yourself. Maybe the only problem you have is those dangerous things you have been buying that wouldn't let your life move forward. Examine yourself, ponder down your path, consider your ways. Know the state of your flock. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Self appraisal is the master key to recovery. Self appraisal. Self appraisal. You know why self appraisal is important? Because no one knows you like you. No one can talk to you like you. No one can knock your head like you. If I knock your head now, you may be angry. But if you knock it by yourself, it will make the brains to align very well. Shout hallelujah. What is it that is tampering with my progress? Maybe the way you speak. They say, how are things? They say, things are not working. And you are still praying. What prayer are you praying? Praying to the one who instructed you to say that, that is a lifting up, you are not saying it, and you are praying him to help you. How will he help you if you are not following what he told you? Why are you not making advancement at your place of work? Maybe it's the way you relate with your boss. Examine your ways. Why is your wife not following you, not obeying you, not responding to your leadership before you blame her and call her a witch? Examine yourself. There is good in every woman if there is a, a good manager at home. Amen? You say your husband slapped you. Examine your way. What did you say to him? Amen? Examine your ways. Before I blame my wife, I ask myself a lot of questions. This helped me tremendously. Because approach determines results. Examine your ways. You are a leader in a group or you are an employer of labor and your staff are not responding well. Examine your way. There is what to do to make your staff cooperate with you for high and maximum productivity. There is a thing you say that motivates them to work and there is a thing you say that demotivates them. Examine a lot of problems of life can be solved if you will just sincerely examine yourself sincerely examine yourself there is a statement a pastor will make that will drive everybody away from the church man while he's praying and fasting there is a statement he will make that will make everybody attend the next service one thing that has helped me a great deal is daily examination Especially when certain areas of my life are not working the way they expect to work. Examine yourself. Examine your ways. Accept responsibility. I had a great man of God called Freddie Casey Price made a statement some time ago. He said, if I fail, it is my fault. If I succeed, it is my fault. Whatever happens to me, I'm responsible for it. Those who think this way, always think well they always think focused and they always produce results because even though some people may stand on your way they are not as important as you standing on your way your greatest obstacle is you 
you are the greatest obstacle. You see, when things happen, we blame things, we blame circumstances, we blame situations, we blame relations, and when there is nobody else to blame, we blame the devil. You see, you know, it's all the works of the devil. He's the devil. He's the devil. I tell you, he's the devil. You fall into fornication. You fall into adultery from time to time. Examine your ways. Ask yourselves about the places you go to at odd times. If you can avoid them, you will avoid temptation. Examine yourself. There are unholy gestures you make that moves your body to commit sin. You look at a lady who is not your wife and you are speaking unpleasant emotional words. How won't you be tempted? Before you left home, you didn't tell your wife, I love you. And one small girl called you and said, I, I just love you, love you. You look, look, you're looking great today. You're looking wonderful. In fact, your, your, your dress is killing today. How won't you be tempted? Examine you. You see, before you blame somebody, somebody says, you see, the, the way some ladies dress, they just, they just get me, they just get me to, to, to lose balance. <laughs> Uh, it's because your eyes are not straight. Everything you are looking at in another lady is in your wife. So if your eye is your problem, look well at your wife before you leave home. <laughs> Examine yourself. Examine yourself. All problems of life are solvable if you will take time to ponder on your past. Examine yourself. Examine yourself. Ponder on your path. Look well. Look well. Look well. Consider your ways. 9 p.m. You are driving out of your house to where? Ask yourself now. An old man like you shouldn't be moved anyhow. I just like to have night, evening drive. You see, you know, you drive, you know, the, the streets of Asokoro, they are very beautiful streets, have light. See, and Satan has strategized somebody there in the corner. So they say, see, just thank the Lord. <laughs> and then Satan says, as you are thanking God, be looking, looking. And then, so I think I've driven past. I'll go and follow that road again. And I'll follow the road. Examine your ways. Places you shouldn't go to. Things you shouldn't look at. Statements you shouldn't make. Discipline is a sign of maturity. At your age, you should be able to determine, I will not look at things like this. And if you are in the public, you close your eyes. Let them call you any name. When I see evil people, I don't want to see, I close my eyes. If it's on television, you mean you can't put on your television that you bought with your money? And to daft, you can't put off your television, you have remote control? You are watching, just like that. <laughs> Examine your ways. Every trap of the devil is controllable. You can tell the devil, stop! By carefully examining the ways. Before you buy that next car, examine your business. See, this business is shaky. Do I need another car? Okay, what do I even want to buy a car for now? What do I want? The one you bought just 12 months ago. So you see, they are already bringing out 2010 model. Sha! <laughs> you will kill yourself for nothing. You kill yourself for nothing. Examine your ways. Say with me, I examine my ways. Now, what is the process of sex self examination? Very importantly, sincerity. Be sincere to yourself. When you are wrong, admit you are wrong. You know what saved David? Sincerity. It was out of sincerity he wrote Psalm 51. If you read Psalm 51, you see David was admitting his sin. He was admitting, he said, Lord, I'm wrong. Lord, I'm wrong. Lord, I'm wrong. Now, the moment you cannot allot wrong to yourself, you're already trapped. They say, what about your uncle? I invite his one. What about your wife? My wife, she's the one who finished me. Your children, my children, it's because of them that I've not been able to invest. School fees every day. Everything I have just go for school fees. Are they the ones who force themselves on you? When you are meeting with your wife every year, delivering every year, you didn't know, you now have barricade of them. Like in a battalion. 
My, if not for my children, my business will have gone international. I tell you something. These children, examine your ways. Shout hallelujah. Be sincere. When there is a fault somewhere, first of all, blame yourself. Accept responsibility. Be sincere. Be able to tell yourself, I am wrong. If you cause trouble in your home as a man, look at your wife and tell her, look, my dear, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. You see, you're saying you will be respected by her for your sincerity. As against disrespect that you think you will end. One thing my wife and I don't delay in doing is about two or three. One, we don't fail to say sorry when it is time to say an obvious sorry. And we don't fail to commend each other when it is time to commend each other. When something is good, I don't delay in saying, oh, that's very wonderful. That's very great. Beautiful. That's quite good. Examine yourself. Be sincere. Shout hallelujah. If you read the story of the prodigal son, you will discover that in all that story, the prodigal son did not blame anybody. He didn't blame anybody. He didn't blame his father. He didn't blame the employer who employed them to be feeding the pigs. He didn't blame them for robbing him the chance to eat the pig's food. He used to eat the pig's food because the owner was not there. And I perceive when the owner saw that the weight of the pigs were not you know, as it should be, the man decided to stay there that day <laughs> to ensure that all the food went to the pigs. So that day, the prodigal son was terrifically hungry. It was that day he sat down and said to himself, look, uh, if there is no way forward, there is a way back forward. <laughs> he said, look, I will go back to my father's house. Shout hallelujah. So when things are not working, be sincere. As a matter of fact, if you find who to blame, de-emphasize it. De-emphasize it. De-emphasize who to blame and blame yourself. When I pray for people and they are not healed, I blame myself for it. Why wouldn't I carry more anointing? To help their faith to work. Instead of saying, oh, it's because you don't have faith, that's why. It's because you don't have faith, that's why you're not healed. Be sincere. Number two, decide to change. Decide. Make a U turn. The prodigal son, I will arise and go back to my father's house. Whatever happens, I'm turning. Decision to change. Because turn your decision into reality by taking practical steps. There are things to do to make good. Like I used to say, some people do think it's just been humorous. If you need to sell a car or two among the six you have, sell and make progress. If you are in debt, you are neck deep and people are harassing you because of your debt, look for what to sell and free your neck from the debt so that your brain can think correctly. Nobody thinks well on that debt because you don't know when next the creditor will call you you don't know when next he will call, knock at your door and not just knocking at the door but you the 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 intimidating harassing insultive statements demoralizing statements you make yeah yeah man yeah yeah, yeah you are a yeah, yeah man you are owing and you are you are smiling yeah yeah man it's enough to destabilize so do whatever you can to free yourself to free yourself a young man spoke to me during the week that he needed to buy a facility and he wanted to go and take some money from the bank. I said, if they can wait for you to get your money, tell them to wait. Taking money from somewhere is the last alternative you should embark upon. Because circumstances could turn. But if it is your own, you will patiently wait for it. You are not in a competition. You are not rushing. These things we are teaching you looks like uh, old-fashioned. But that's what the reason why we are breathing very well, the way we are breathing. Some of you wonder why I'm as young as I am young looking. That's the reason. I don't carry load on my head bigger than me. The reason why my back can't break, I won't carry bucket bigger than my hand. I'm not trying to impress anybody. I will not buy a car that I cannot maintain. I will not. I will not put my children in school where I will need to be believing God to pay the school fees. I will not rent a house in a place where I will be under pressure looking for how to get money to pay for the next rent. I've never been ashamed to take anybody to where I live in my life. Even when I had bench to sleep with, I had guests with me, sleeping on bench. 
If you come to my house, you like you to stay, you don't like you to go. No pressure of any kind. No pressure of, you see, you know, you need to put your children in a class, in a school, where people like that and like that are going. I was in Kaduna a few weeks ago, and I took the pastors that traveled with me to, to the school where my children started school from. Because I realized that there is no school where they open a child's brain and put book inside. <laughs> Some of our elders seated there who are generous. You need to find out what school they attended. I asked one of our men yesterday what school he said he attended LEA, LEA school. <laughs> and he's a doctor. He's a doctor. He attended LEA school. You are killing yourself too much. Stop. Reduce the pressure on your life. One of our elderly people here met me about three Sundays ago and was telling me his life story. Highly placed before he retired. He started attending school when he was 13 years old. Yet, by dedication, by commitment, by discipline, he rose up to a peak position in his career. Don't kill yourself. Don't kill yourself. There are dollars in high international schools. Dollars, dollars, smoking wee wee. Be sincere to yourself. Be sincere to yourself. I love that. I, I just, I live my life quietly, simple, no competition, not trying to look like anybody, not trying to impress anybody. If you think my car is not good enough, that's your business. Car is for function, essentially, before fashion. If it can take me to where I'm going to, I'm all right. It's you who have problem to think that my car doesn't have air condition. If I want air condition, I wind down the glass. <laughs> I condition myself. <laughs> Hallelujah. I condition myself. Praise God. When I was growing up as a young pastor, I didn't have air condition. I said, it's very good for me. If I have air condition, I'll be sleeping too much. So I blow the fan. The fan does not only blow hot. It makes noise. Waga, 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 waga. So I stay awake by force. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please be sincere to yourself. Examine yourself. I'd like you to get back home this afternoon and sit down. Which way am I hurting myself? Which way am I hurting myself? Which way am I putting myself under unnecessary pressure? Which way am I hindering my progress? And the Holy Spirit will be showing to you one, two, three, four ways. Wait for your turn. When it is your turn, everything will turn. When it is your time, everything will shine. Don't kill yourself. There are people whose houses I couldn't enter before by reason of how great such houses are. But now they beg me that just step into my house. I say, me, step into your house. I'm coming when I have time. Because things are changing in the positive. Lord, deliver me from self-deceit. Pray. Pray this prayer. It's important prayer. That I will not be eating above my level. I will not be wearing above my level. I will not live above my level. One day at a time. Shout hallelujah. Praise God. A few years ago when we were in Kaduna, a young man came to me and he said to me, you see, um, I like to sometimes go for weekend, you know, at Nikon Nogger. Just like to go there and have some nice time, relax myself. I said, how much do they charge you? He mentioned it. I said, you, you, you are an Akbar. But if I hear you go there, I'll cut your leg. He said, yes, sir. And he started putting the money together. And after a year, he had expanded his business so much. Examine yourself. Examine yourself. You are not due to travel by air. Go by night. Go, 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 go. He said, how are you traveling? He said, ah, I'm going by air. Go by air. And you get inside the plane. You don't even know how to detach the belt. <laughs> because you want to create a class for yourself. Examine yourself. Examine yourself. Examine yourself. Examine yourself. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. There are things I will never buy in my life. Never. Not because I don't have the money. The common sense demands that I be judicious in running my expenses. I don't spend according to what I have. I spend according to Holy Ghost inspired budget with good sense, thinking the future. 
you don't have a plot of land, you are traveling by first class to UK. You are a, a bar. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. Something has happened to somebody today. Lift up your hand and thank God for the word you have received. Thank God. Thank God for the word you have received. Receive grace to apply the word in Jesus' precious name. Amen. God is a good God. Thank you.